Jyotha and Sanjukta, we have about seven participants now, almost. So I think. Uh, yes, we we could start the session. people in. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Jyotha from the U.S. Consulate, Kolkata, and I welcome you all to today's session. We are glad to have with us Bryce Aishram from the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi, and she would like to say a few words. Thank you, Bryce, for joining us, and I would now like to pass it over to you. Thank you very much. So good morning, everyone uh, from New Delhi. As just mentioned, my name is Bryce Aisham. I'm the Acting Cultural Affairs Officer here at the Public Affairs Section at the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi. I am thrilled to be, to be part of this webinar today, to introduce the webinar. I think, first of all, I need to say a few thank yous. The first thank you goes to our IVLP, our exchange alumna, Sanjukta Mukherjee for conducting the session. As you all know, it's on serious su su sustainability practices. And this is part of her project, which is funded by the US Embassy. And the objective is to help women entrepreneurs and small businesses create more environmentally sustainable enterprises. I also have a couple more thank yous. I wanna thank our grantee organization, Swecha, who's been absolutely excellent in supporting projects like this. And I want to thank the experts for the session, whom you will soon hear from, Sudajit Sanyal and Satrijit Sanyal. But most of all, I want to thank all of you, all of our participants, for taking your time out today on a Sunday morning to participate. That I mean, you are the most important people of all in this session. Okay. This Now let me move to the session. The session can either be your first step toward building your capacity to adopt sustainable practices in your workplaces, or if you've already started that route, it can be a good refresher and can give you some tips and practices to help you keep going. Okay. I think certainly in that respect, it will increase, this session will increase your awareness and help your enterprises become more sustainable. But at the same time, it will help you accelerate the growth of your business. And these two things, like accelerating the growth of your businesses, adopting sustainable practices, it's not just a goal for you. It's not just a goal for India. It's not just a goal for the United States. It is, I'm sure you all know, it is a worldwide goal. So, and that's very, very important in this day and age. Okay. I, and all of us here today, and everyone at the embassy, and certainly in my public affairs section, look really look forward to hearing from you later, either by email or by phone, about how this session, how this training has helped you um, in making your businesses more sustainable. What tips did you learn? What practices did you learn? How did you put, the, how did you put them into practice? Um, we would love to hear from you afterwards. With that, I'm gonna say thank you very much to everyone, again, especially our participants. I now want to turn the webinar over again to Jayita, who is our wonderful alumni coordinator in Kolkata. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Bryce. Um, hello, Sanjukta. Uh, now we look forward to learning about sustainability practices and uh, from the session. And you may please go ahead with this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jayita. A warm welcome to all the participants and a big Thank you to the U.S. Embassy, Bright, Joita, and Swetcha, of course. Uh, with that, um, I would like Oshim to uh, very quickly go through two or three points that we would like the participants to follow and the requirements of the question answer session. And then I would like uh, Shatra Jit to uh, briefly talk about the project conception and the ideation behind this particular project. Oshim, please, very quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjukta, and thank you, Bryce and Joyita, for a wonderful introduction. Firstly, good morning to everyone. And thank you for being here. It's a Sunday, and all of us have time to be a part of this session. It really really means a lot to all of us who come mm -hmm. together to facilitate this today. Um, uh, just a few things before we begin the webinar and before we get into the speaker presentations. I'd like to let you all know that this, this entire webinar is going to take place from 
from 11 a.m. to roughly 1 p.m. Uh, each of the speakers that we have, we have three speakers today, three facilitators um, who are going to be speaking for roughly 30 minutes each. And post each presentation, post each speaker presentation, we'll actually have a short question answer session. This is another uh, note that we also sent out in the email to all of us. Since we're a large group on this webinar, we'd request you to keep yourselves on mute for the entirety of the discussion and uh, also keep your videos off because of internet bandwidth issues. So while the speaker is speaking, all our videos shall remain off and we shall stay on mute. In case we have any questions, we can. Uh, there's a chat box that's there. I'm sure all of us who've been part of webinars or who have been attending Zoom calls would know about this chat box that's there at the bottom of your screen. So you can just uh, post any of your questions and after each speaker finishes their respective presentations, we'll have a, a short question answer with the speaker which will last about 15, 20 minutes again. So with that, having said that, uh, I'm going to now uh, give it off to, to Shokshajit, who will just brief you a little bit more about the project and a little bit more about what, what we're going to be doing today. Uh, Shokshajit, just a second, you are on mute. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, am I audible to everybody? Is it clear? Yes. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, a very uh, warm welcome to all of you, and uh, we are very happy that you're here today with all of us. Uh, as you're aware, the uh, you know the U.S. Embassy has been helping us in this entire process, and Swetcha uh, as an entity has, for the last 20 years, been spearheading a lot of uh, sustainability-oriented practices. We, uh, you know, the speakers and the uh, you know experts out here who have gotten together have been working in the area in the praxis of serious sustainability, which is connecting uh, the business or whatever you're doing in your everyday practices to the triple bottom line. Now, uh, what the triple bottom line is, how we connect to it, what effect it has on our everyday life and also in our, on our business is something that we'll discuss as we go along in the way. But for the time being, just to make it clear, we'll share with you a few tools which will perhaps connect the dots and help you, uh, let's say, align whatever you're doing to living a little more effectively as far as human beings, that is people resources, planet, that is environmental resources, and even your finances go. Thank you. Uh, over to Sandipra. Thank you very much. Uh, we are in a, an unbelievable space right now. And talking of just the business, many micro small businesses are battling to survive. Many have in fact closed down. People are losing their livelihoods. The economic challenge is huge. Uh, there is a saying in Africa, uh, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer to that is bit by bit. So we need to take a step back, regroup and start looking at the options and opportunities available. A lot of people tend to think that, uh, you know, too much attention to environmental protection slows down economic growth. But all over the world, uh, voices are very strong from different communities that time has come to address climate change and have fairer and more reachable economies. So basically, uh, in other words, the major trade-offs required between these two objectives, that is, uh, it is not true, and there is still possibility of significant win-win outcomes, is what we've been, you know, taught to think. But it, it's not true, and we're going to highlight on how you can allocate it and make a difference. Now, we hope this will be a very strong step to create a community of changes back together to address the complex and immense challenges. With a solution for shift towards low carbon and environmentally sustainable economies while contributing to social inclusion, creation of decent work for all with the aim of leaving no one behind. So I would like now to move over to my slide presentation. Um, is it, um, can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. yes. 
All right. Thank you. Uh, Sanjukta, we can all see, but I'd also last, uh, ask you to have a look or if uh, uh, Ashim can help because there's a lot of echo. I'm not sure that all the participants can hear clearly. Uh, yeah, so I would like uh, Ashim to kind of just step in. Ashim. Sanjukta, we can hear you clearly now. So if you. Yeah, now it's clear. Now it's clear. I okay. think you had okay. a bit of an internet issue earlier, but I, I think that's uh, sorted from your end now. So if you could just share your screen once, we can. Okay, uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. So can you. And while Sanjukta is sharing her screen, I'd just like to quickly introduce her to you all. Uh, just a second. Uh, so as you all know, she's 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 working and leading this project on the ground, and she's she's an she's an alumni from. Uh, from the U.S. State Department, and she's actually been uh, an exchange alumni as part of one of the projects that she's been uh, exchange project that she's been on before. She's also a first generation entrepreneur, and she has uh, she's actually founded Optima Solution Consulting. Uh, we can actually see your screen now, so I think Sanjukta, are you, are you ready with your presentation? Should we should we proceed? Yeah, I'm. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. All of you can see this, yeah, right. So. A disclaimer on the data security, we do not keep any any of the um, data, but, and this is being hosted on Zoom, and you can go and check their privacy policy, but SDRC does not keep any data. So with that, to move on, the agenda is the welcome session over. I'm going to talk about sustainable development goals, challenges, and the interrelationships between them, and to business. Shatra Jaitanya is going to talk about sustainable production and processes, giving the framework of enterprise scorecard. And uh, we will have Judha Jaitanya, who will talk about an overview of the market right now and what opportunities are possible. So with that, uh, setting the context that MSME small businesses with single digit workforces or more budding entrepreneurs who are who are thinking of starting a business, all are hard hit by the present COVID-19 outbreak and related economic downturn. And disruption, this is a major unprecedented disruption. Disruption has always been there in the economy. Now, in response to the crisis, we see that international organizations, governments, our domestic governments are implementing policies and strategies. Yes, thank you, thank you. So to move on, uh, to minimize uh, the impact, the negative impact, and to protect worker rights and to help the organizations themselves towards resilience. Now this workshop is focused on how, how enterprises themselves can devise strategies to seek opportunities present in the current situation. Now the course will dive into effective business continuity strategies with a specific focus on the sustainable practices and fostering green business growth, which has immense growth opportunities in the present context. Now, if you see, I have a small box here which talks about sustainable business practices that are being practiced by uh, businesses world over. And we are talking of setting up a community of practitioners. I'll talk about uh, this in details, and the module will talk about some of these. So, cradle to cradle design. You have the lean and the green thinking, all systems thinking. move on uh, I'm stopping the sharing for a moment I'm not able to change the screen just a minute
resume slides from uh sanjita i think you need to be closer to the mic because when you're a little further away the voice is breaking so we okay all right it. yeah this is much better yeah this is much better yeah 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 much okay better. all right great so when we are saying that we saying that sustainable development is the future we have to remember that the rate of progress will depend on many things now one as you can see here the the correct mix and balance between the state and the market that is the state with its tax taxation structures legislative context uh, leadership and a competition competition and cooperative action locally nationally and globally so the alliances and agreements that your country will have with the global uh, community and given that the projected increase in the global population and consumerism human humanity needs to reduce its negative environmental load significantly or over time there will be a significant de decline of what we call ecosystem resilience so in short doing more with less uh now addressing the challenges there are a lot of challenges in going green uh and some of them are that removing disincentives and creating incentives now and aligning stakeholders around common vision finding multiple benefit opportunities so one of the core focus of sustainable business is collaboration rather than competition and as we go through the modules we will talk about ways of doing this now the model of growth and development pursued in the last decades has not delivered the inclusive growth and sustainable development aspired to by people around the world the recent uh, global economic and financial crisis has shown and thrown into stark relief the inadequate capacity to create sufficient numbers of decent and productive jobs uh, at the same time the unsustainably high environmental cost of a business as usual model and the threat of climate change reversing the progress made on poverty reduction are becoming ever clearer and more urgent now sustainable development which not only balances but builds on the synergies between economic growth social inclusion preservation of the environment which is not only possible it is becoming an imperative so we are saying that there is actually no trade off between economic growth and uh, protecting the ecology one is dependent on the other and with the decline of one the other will decline over time it's just a matter of time and i think it requires no more uh, spotlighting that the time has come now when we we are speaking of just work or dust transition what exactly do we mean so the idea is to grow solutions together so just transitions promote the shift towards low carbon environmentally sustainable economies while contributing to the inclusion eradication of poverty and the creation of decent work for all with the aim of leaving no one behind and when we are talking of green jobs or green enterprises the ilo concept of green jobs is this the green jobs and enterprises can be generically defined as the direct employment economic activity created in different sectors of the economy and through related activities which reduces the environmental impact of those sectors and activities and ultimately brings it down to sustainable level so we are saying that it is not possible to have infinite growth on a finite planet with finite resources now this includes decent jobs that help to reduce consumption of energy and raw materials decarbonize the economy protect and restore ecosystems and biodiversity and minimize the production of waste and pollution now to move on just give me one second
Okay. Now, what are the in interlinkages between environment and economy? Now, there are a large number of links between the environment and economy, and thus many sources of green employment. For a modern economy, even in the least developed countries, a complete mapping of links between the environment and economy is a major challenge given the many positive and negative feedback loops that would need to be examined because this is a whole systems uh, thinking that we are talking about now a uh, well managed natural environment contributes to economic growth growth why do we say this because we're going to look at how economic growth affects the environment and then look at how environmental degradation affects economic growth the environmental policies that help to make most out of the environmental protection and economic growth and then focus on our own green enterprises now in order to start or to green your enterprise existing enterprise we must first understand the sdg goals and the interlinkages to our business now i am sure many of you here today must have seen this very colorful matrix of the SDGs. Um, I am going to give a very small uh, historical, um, you know, viewpoint of the SDGs. So it's to move on. So it started in September twenty fifth, two thousand fifteen. Countries. adopted a set of goals to simulate action for people planet prosperity peace and partnership as part of a new sustainable development plan i'm not going to go into the details uh, of uh, the uh, you know moment till 2017 but it started as early as uh, 1980s now we have the 17 sdgs and the associated 169 targets which gives a very good framework for integrating the sdgs into our uh, business now as you begin or as you continue your journey towards a just transition as agents of change we will look at the sdgs themselves to give you a framework of reference uh what is their direct application to how you go about your business or your work every day we will briefly talk about some features of the sdgs and their targets and aspirations uh, how can they be clustered into themes and there are several themes included in the 17 sdgs but we have uh, focused on uh, the four the first one that we are talking about is called the well being goals so to move on just give me one second so the first goal while uh, yeah so the first goal that we have here is uh, focused on well being of the people the second set of goals that we have surrounding the well being theme is infrastructure what infrastructure do we need to uh, contribute to the well being and surrounding the infrastructure are the goals focused on natural environment and spanning all of these together is partnership goals so how businesses can reach individual targets inside this framework inside the sustainable development uh, goal framework is the primary uh, topic of discussion today now what is it to embed the un sustainable goals into day to day business processes that you have now, if you look at the various uh, you know goals or earlier on when i showed you that small box on uh, sustainable on business practices you will see that there were words like biophilic cradle to cradle now obviously these will mean different things for different kinds of businesses right and since measurement is a very crucial aspect of monitoring and tracking we need a solid framework 
Now, say for example, uh, we, if you look at goal two here, zero hunger. It relates to infrastructure as well as welfare. And in, in, inside the SPDA, you will see that the goals, each goal, they are interrelated to each other in multiple ways. And when you translate it into business practices, the business should also have the interlinkages. Now, the whole concept of this is to create communities of practice, to create supply chains, to create marketplaces, which support the view that we can do well financially by doing good. Now, as I said earlier, that every country or every ecology will have varying capacity for adopting the goals. And depending on the uh, enablers in your own ecology or organization uh, will depend a lot. And hence the need to set up a community of practice to strongly advocate sustainable development. Now, to give you some solid examples, suppose you want to uh, have a business, so you already have a business focused on innovative waste management. It could be food waste composting. It could be related to batteries and recycling of batteries. It could be uh, you know, removing waste by some innovative technique in the form of uh, say e-waste or plastics from the landfills and using it as a raw material for some other business. Now, if you are into say, for example, making food waste composting, you can link it to the local councils or the local uh, governmental structures development goals and look at multiple effects so instead of you know competing with a person who is doing a similar thing you are collaborating and making an entire value chain where you are looking at an environmental problem and doing business out of it making it a positive impact on the community, on the environment, and for yourself as well. Now to move on and to exactly, uh, you know, talk about what is the interlinkage and how, and another thing is how can you link to the global unity around these goals? So the local impact, the global impact and the relevance of what you're doing in your own community to the relevance in the world. So your initiative, local global impact and relevance to the world, because these are all interconnected and we cannot ignore and, and only operate in a silo anymore. Now, the reasons for linking your project to SDG is that it helps you to emphasize your impact. To channel your impact as part of the world's impact and become more relevant to the world. And instead of just selling a good or a service in your own way, you are actually part of a worldwide movement, which is focusing on similar things. And when you communicate your business or your product or services, you are using a new spoken language between civil society, between your beneficiaries or customers, and definitely hence connect to more partners. Now, the steps are that you have to first determine clear and concise objectives for your project or concept from the early phases of planning. Identify, identify your target audience and beneficiaries. Identify which SDGs is relevant to your project objectives, and it could be more than one, and then choose the targets relevant to your projects. And when we spoke about the measurement, you have to measure keeping the framework and the target of the SDGs in mind. Now to, to move on, in order to be able to do all of this, you need to have a a clear understanding of sustainable development goals. And all of us, I think, know about the famous uh, Brantlin uh, definition, but it really doesn't tell us what to do on Monday morning and exactly how it is relevant to 
your business so i am going to go into a small uh, you know explanation of the situation currently and then focus your business in this context now we live in a small you know a very fragile uh, surrounding called the biosphere so this is the layer where life is possible and it is possible because there is a cycle which is going on so plants give us food and oxygen it is consumed by animals and human beings in return we give fertilizers and co2 to the plants which helps them to grow this cycle is a very fast cycle like we eat food every day and we breathe every second okay now this is a self sufficient cycle to move on uh there is then be below we have the lithosphere and in the lithosphere we see another cycle moving so below inside the um, you know earth we have um heavy metals and we have oil deposits and naturally in nature these come out from time to time say through volcanic eruptions or weathering and it stays in the atmosphere and this is a very slow cycle it takes a lot of time for this cycle the the things that come out of the lithosphere to go back through through say the mineralization or sedimentation and other processes now this biosphere so this is this is the other cycle which is running the biosphere has two systems one is the open energy system now this is open because the sunlight comes in and radiations go out and we have another closed system here uh so the closed system says that nothing is created and nothing disappears everything is only transformed so perhaps what the earth began with 4 million years ago is still there on the on the surface of the earth but in a different uh let's say in a different form and this is possible because apart from meteorites that, that may have come and hit us from outer space most of the things that we began with are still there on the earth and they just transform okay but then the conundrum is say you keep an iphone on your desk and after a million years it will turn to dust now if you keep a pile of dust on your uh, desk there is no possibility that in a million years it is turn back into an iphone so how is it possible that you know we have so many things around us the the luxuries that we enjoy now the the trick to that is that photosynthesis and that is what pays the bills so photosynthesis is that system which uh, you know with the help of energy and uh, sugar makes the goods it it's of course uh, the produce in our fields that we use and then then we have man made innovations hello sorry at least our jodi kora practice ta thake tahole ami Uh, I think someone has their. Um, yeah, sorry. So to carry on, now, what makes this system? This is a very very well balanced system. What makes this system unsustainable? So I am going to tell you four things that really make. the balance of the system go haywire the first one is that we are digging up at a very very rapid rate the heavy metals and the oil that is supposed to be inside the earth and the earth's capacity to you know recycle it back into the lithosphere 
is being overtaxed. So there is a huge accumulation of heavy metals and the resultant carbon dioxide from burning of fossil fuels in the biosphere. The second thing that we do is we man-made chemicals. We are producing a lot of chemicals and other substances along with pollution uh, that the the eco ecosystem does not have the power to recycle at the rate that it is used to. So all of that is becoming uh, accumulated in the atmosphere and making this very unsustainable. The third thing that we are doing is that apart from producing more than the ecosystem can take care of, we are also we are also cutting down trees, we are destroying the ecosystems, and we are uh, you know, harming the biodiversity, we are cutting down forests, we are making grazing fields, and then uh, parks for uh, you know, parking lots and things like that. So we are actually destroying nature's capacity to take care of the continuous soil. Cycle. And the most important, I think, is the social aspect. So when you're buying the produce that we have here, that is made, say, for example, in an undeveloped country where people are not even meeting their basic needs, we are actually propagating this this entire cycle so we say that it is good to buy cheap things and we are not aware that the environment is paying the price but end of the day it's going to be our uh, our next generation who's going to pay the price okay so to move on am i audible everyone uh, no, your voice is again quite broken and choppy. Oh. Yeah. So it might be an internet connection. Um, I don't know if... No. Or do, yeah, okay. Okay. Now some... Uh, Ashim, I would like to uh, like you to check on the connect connectivity. C connection is okay. So okay, so, so I'll go on. Can hear it's you. fine. Yes. You can you can hear. Okay. I think you're very okay. close to the mic when you're speaking. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, some of the urgently needed measures, and these measures are connected to uh, the possibility of starting your green business. Also, is carbon sequestration. It refers to the capture and long-term storage of CO2 in the forest. So we are helping uh, nature take care of the excess burden of. Uh, CO2 that we have uh, loaded the biosphere with because of our activities. So it can be uh, captured in the forest, in ocean, or deep geological formations to reduce the concentration. The next thing uh, you know, that I wanted to move on to, in fact, inside businesses, you will see, just a minute. That there are various areas where we can green the processes. The first one is the raw materials. We can make conscious choices about the raw materials, keeping in mind the um, unsustainable, you know, four points that I just discovered. So that you're not contributing to any of those unsustainable measures. You can take similar um, kind of measures in the goods or services that you produce. The you know, the logistics of your employees or yourselves or the goods or services, then the buildings and the facilities that you use for your business, the distribution channel, and definitely the product waste. So these are the six areas in which you can green your processes and contribute directly to um, sustainable development. To go back. Now, when you this is particularly for young people who are thinking of starting a green business now. The one clear solution is look at the environmental problems in the community 
versus the natural resources available in the community. Now, the, so what the first matrix, you can use this matrix to conceptualize a new business plan, or if you already have a business, what, what are the areas in which you can green that business was the slide that I spoke about before. Now, uh, regarding conceptualization of a new business, now looking at what the health and environmental problems exist in your community, make a list of uh, that in your locality. The second thing is look at what's already being done to address these problems. So let's make a list of that. The second, the third thing is what is not yet being done, done at all or what is not being done well. So where is the gap in what is being done already and what requires what's left to be done. And you have to access it with the framework of the sustainable development goals and tie it up to the global community of practitioners. Now, does your community have any natural resources or waste products that could be used for businesses? Now, I happen to know of a huge uh, number of young women who use recycled uh, clothes to make beautiful articles uh, and inside home, inside their homes for selling uh, creative gifts and things like that. And, and they have really turned their hobbies into business. So, uh, the, so something like that, and it could be more uh, intensive processes uh, like collecting uh, plastic waste of a particular dimension and using it for uh, as a raw material, and that requires a te technological innovation to use it uh, without contributing to the already existing, uh, you know, pollution. Now the fifth one is already are there already some businesses in your community that make use of these resources why i am asking you to focus on this is that this is one of collaboration the business model is one of collaboration so it is not to say that okay i can you know sell better by reducing my price or by focusing only on advertisement or uh, the you know business as usual models but can I collaborate and make the community a better place or the world a better place to live in? And uh, then are there untapped opportunities to make use of these resources to collaborate with somebody who's already doing it and he's he or she is facing a problem? So can your service be uh, clubbed into that already existing uh, process that is in place? Now, uh, this is for your reading. Now, once I've, I've just given the example of one sustainable development goal and uh, listed four of the targets. And there are many under each goal. So say some targets with uh, SDG 12 is achieve the sustainable management and efficient use of natural resources. Why I have uh, you know, I have the slide here is looking at the targets will give you many ideas, business ideas of where you can pitch in with the service to um, make a positive contribution to this particular uh, SDG or related SDG goals. And that is a very, very good framework to use, particularly for uh, budding entrepreneurs. Now, Move on. Uh, now, if it now, if you focus, so this this particular SDG goal is uh, responsible consumption and uh, production. And uh, there could be many services and products focused around this particular goal. Uh, and I'm going to now talk about some figures. Uh, now, every one of us uh, can see the clear signs that a number of fundamental planetary processes around the world are failure. Uh, if that fails, our growth stops. So there is a clear direct linkage to uh, you know, 
direct linkage to environmental degradation resulting in stoppage of growth and not the other way around so basically the idea of before was that uh, unless you exploit the uh, natural resources around you you cannot improve business growth but we see that if you do that too much it's unsustainable and that results in stoppage of business growth and the time has really come to you know take a step back now let us consider the high profile issue like global warming and everyone today we are aware of the effects of global warming and climate change now a case where climate modeling uh, we now have enough data to begin to make predictions about how fast we need to change to reduce such risks i would request all of you to uh, have a look at the um, sdg compass that is freely available on the ilo website and that gives you a clear idea of the things that can be done as part of a business venture of course to reduce such risks now recent studies also show that deep cuts to greenhouse emissions of 60% in principle are possible by 2050 using a combination of energy efficiency demand management and green energy so there are huge business opportunities in each of these particular uh, target areas for you to consider and uh, the alliances that we already have in place and sdrc has been working hand in hand with uh, green on entrepreneurs and clusters of women focused on green entrepreneurship you can please get in touch with us to uh, for more hand holding uh, and to to move on so this is basically about partnerships and which is the overarching uh goal that envelops the wellness goals the infrastructural goals and the environmental goals so part partnerships for achieving your project it is integrating the partners in the implementation process joint efforts with partners to maximize and unify the impact and creating clear effective communications and follow up with your partners so with that i um, stop my presentation and it's time for uh, questions if any from any of you thank you thank you sanjukta that was uh, truly a wonderful presentation uh, particularly like the aspect of of community engagement that you brought in and how we have to really look at something that focuses more on collaboration versus competition and how it's very, you very beautifully actually introduced the entire concept to us and also an overview of what we're going to be speaking about uh today vis a vis sustainable development goals and integrating them into uh whether you're a starting up enterprise or some someone who's been in the field of business for a while so thank you very much for that very enlightening presentation uh i'm just quickly going through the chats uh, chat box here and uh, the first um question that we got was uh, from adrija das gupta who's a journalist uh, of trade fair uh, trade fair times kolkata and he he asks uh, if your organization has a sustainability program if you'd like to and also what are the sustainability challenges that your organization faces okay uh, so uh, sdrc that is sustainable design research consortium is a think and do tank we uh, conduct research uh, on identified uh, uh, you know target groups and we also handhold and uh, mentor uh, sustainable businesses primarily focused on women entrepreneurship but also on marginalized communities and generally anybody who is interested in that that's one primary focus of our organization and i have uh, collaborations uh, and i saw collaborations and my change basically that uh, seems to be the you know challenge and, and that's not that's not limited to the organization i think that's goal that of us aspire to in this system and uh, that i think is i would be going to to as a uh, major challenges that we sorry sanjukta we we lost you towards the end once again if you could also while the next presentation happens you could probably just mention it in the chat box we couldn't hear the the latter part of of what you wanted to say was with the challenges that your organization uh, faces so if you could maybe mention that in the chat box as well i'll do that i'll do that yeah yes yes uh if there if there are any more questions that anyone has for sanjukta 
uh, you can either place them in the chat box or feel free to to unmute yourselves or if you'd like to raise your hand uh, you could probably put your video on so that i could unmute you and then and then we could we could address that question uh, just going to give it another 2 minutes if anyone has any questions for sanjukta yeah so i if there are no uh, questions i could uh, i could repeat what i said so change of mindset and meaningful collaborations these two seem to be the major you know challenges as well as opportunity areas that we envisage on behalf of sdrc uh currently Uh, just i have a question hello yes yes uh, is there any legal framework internationally legal framework or convention in this regard that can usher us towards that uh, uh, making it in a practicality absolutely absolutely you have raised a very very important point and i have covered that uh, that in order to uh, go the green way it is very very important to uh, have uh, to know about the legal framework of the country the taxation structure the incentives and the disincentives that are in place for you to progress in your business venture and uh, we also have uh, support for entrepreneurs to help them tackle or to give them the uh, idea and the overview in respect to their own business goals Oh. And, you know, in this, in this, in this respect, I will say, I will just suggest I ask, ask you, uh, what is the start stone of the framework, international framework or convention that can guide us towards that line? So, uh, taxation structures and legal frameworks are particularly. If you are talking, I am not talking on the national convention. I am still talking from the international perspective. so we are focusing on the sdg framework today the sustainable development goals so i would for this for the purposes of this module i would focus on one framework there are a number of initiatives that the global community have focused on and they are sectoral so uh, if if i would have to choose one i would choose the sustainable development goals right now fine uh could i take this question later sanjukta when i uh, proceed with the uh, you know presentation because it's a very interesting question and we can go a little further on that absolutely absolutely thanks shotoji yeah sanjukta would you would you like to add any more points to that or no i think i wa i wanted to be in time and i think i will uh, ask you to uh, pass on to shotrajit's presentation absolutely uh shotojit you could uh, thank you very much sanjukta once again for that very insightful and in insightful presentation uh and i was just giving us an overview and and introduction a very thorough introduction <laughs> into <laughs> as well as uh, right again there was just someone who so just again once again uh, while speakers are in fact throughout the entirety of the discussion it would be great if all of us could keep ourselves on mute so that there is no disturbance and uh you could keep your videos on if you'd like but uh, there are bandwidth issues there are network issues uh so would request you to at least at least during the discussion period you could keep your videos off and then when when we get into quick q and a after each uh, presentation you could uh, put your videos on and and unmute yourselves and ask your questions so thank you very much sanjukta uh moving forward we i would like to introduce you all to our next presenter uh shotrajit sanyal who is uh qualified as doctorate of business administration focusing on human productivity and systems from canterbury he's a lead assessor practitioner and trainer in various management and behavioral assessments like gisc nlp iso 26000 aa 1000 od balanced scorecard and strategic performance management systems uh, he has been a contributor to several employment ventures to core processes and is certified by pecb canada as a global trainer for iso 26000 of which he is in anab accredited lead auditor um currently he is promoting three startups as well as the all chamber of commerce and industry deputy director and head of division in the indian chamber of commerce center for excellence which he helped set up as deputy director in the confederation of indian industry 
industry and functions as director on board sustainable design research consortium a social environmental design nft he helped promote it also uh, sanjit has been joined along with it so uh, without further ado i'd like to introduce you all to shashpreet kanyal uh, shashpreet it would be great if you could uh, share your screen as well Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but there is some uh, ambient noise. Uh, could you check that out once before oh, I, we see? I think one of the participants is still on on. on I think so also. So I'm just going to unmute them. Yes, is it better now? Yeah, yeah much better. Absolutely. Am I clearly audible? Yes, absolutely. Okay, right. Uh, before I proceed with the uh, you know presentation, I'd like to have a small uh, bit of interaction with all of the participants, and if they can, I would suggest uh, if they wish to unmute themselves and at least uh, revert to what I have to say. Uh, is that okay, Ashim? Absolutely, sure, sure. Okay, okay. So I'd like to ask the participants because uh, you've been introduced to the entire session. Uh, that my session deals essentially with uh, enterprise scorecards. So before getting into a deep dive, uh, you know, a discussion about what enterprise scorecards are, and I have a slide, but I would try to keep it as much into a discussion mode than a slide because uh, you know uh, there is too little time and too much of information to share about enterprise scorecards. We can go on for days and months at an end, and even then, like I've been practicing this discipline for quite some time, but I'm not an expert yet. I don't think I ever will be. because it's an emergent discipline it's something that we keep on learning about but today since we are talking about sustainability and uh, aspects of uh, what we call the environment like the business environment the human environment the uh, nature as an environment uh, you know which are essentially ecosystems ecologies uh, i'd like to connect the two and make it easier for you in wherever you are uh, whatever you are doing and uh, be able to leverage some of the these uh, scorecards or some of the tools that we use to create a scorecard for your own ecology so before we proceed uh, i just like to ask a question to all of the participants if they have something to uh, add to this or if they can revert to this that when we say enterprise whatever your uh, like you know backgrounds are whatever your uh, intentions are in the future or in the present whatever your professions are what would you define as an enterprise and if you are talking about a scorecard even if you are trained or not trained in the balanced scorecard as a domain or if you've been introduced to it as a theory as a practice whatever how would you like to link the two uh, so ashim could we have some uh, responses if there are any uh yes yeah, shatrujit ramkrishna here yes yes ramkrishna please yeah. uh i would i would certainly like to look at because um, i i didn't commented on San, sanjukta's presentation but i what i feel the geopolitical situation is really a very very volatile situation right mm -hmm. and uh, like sustainability goal or uh, climate agenda or anything uh, is is not standing as such and with this covid 19 we know that uh, there is now uh, uh, it's it's a global situation where local solutions need to be bought and practiced and then tested in different situations and different locations absolutely i think if if you can if if you can focus on entrepreneur point of view mm -hmm. how a entrepreneur can develop a model uh, which he wants to be tested in different geopolitical situation or geographical situation and see how how that can get transformed to a uh, uh, with with sustainable globe uh, your uh, uh, sustainability agenda or climate change agenda and things like that because sustainability is one of the key issue which is going to be very very critical in coming future that's what i see thank you absolutely right thank you very much ramkrishna could we have it from anybody else um adrija has asked if is technology the next big thing can webinars virtual exhibitions be recognized more than face to face marketing ah uh, yes but then uh, uh, okay i'll connect that to my uh, you know to my session yeah perfect but uh, before we go on uh, just to set the context and make it clear uh, 
Uh, I'll take you through just four slides, so it will not be much. But I, what I want you to do is, if it is possible for all of you, if you could have a sheet of paper in front of you and a pen or a pencil, where you can jot down a few things which you can take away directly and try and apply in whichever uh, profession, vocation, avocation that you have right now. Even if it's a hobby, even if it's a hobby, uh, something that you're doing, but something which is connected to the triple bottom lines, the you know people, profit and planet portfolio that we are talking about. I'd like you to see if, even if it is theoretically, practically applicable to any of these. Uh, with that, I'll just proceed. See, a balanced scorecard is essentially looking at these four uh, aspects of any enterprise system. By an enterprise system, before we go any further, we mean anything which is under an organized system where you are trying to generate some kind of an outcome or profit. Uh, it need not be a profit in the sense profit for profit's sake. It can even be a, you know, a, like what we call a, a profit for a purpose or uh, more than profit. These are not terms that we use in India. <laughs> we only say not profit. But then say, for example, an organization is trying to do a lot of good work and it is doing a lot of good, good work in the social sphere. So there's a lot of social equity which it is generating, but it is not a not-for-profit concern. Even those we are bringing into this uh, entire structure that we are talking about today. Uh, just for your information, this extends to any structure. Even a completely commercial enterprise can look at uh, sustainability reporting, being sustainable in its processes, and using the balance scorecard for that. And just to add another, uh, like, you know, like just to underscore another point, at this, like where we are standing today, uh, with COVID and with a post COVID scenario, and with whatever has been happening ever since the Brunton Commission, we are not in a position to not do a sustainability analysis and reporting because that is directly related to our business continuity. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I say business continuity, I'm even talking about the teachers, the journalists, the professionals, the lawyers, the development practitioners, the engineers, everyone has to look at their own ecology as an ecology which requires uh, scorecarding and reporting, if not formally, then at least in the, uh, like, you know, in the developing domain. In the sense, you have to look at your future, you have to look at resilience, you have to look at how you're planning the business with certain essential things, essential aspects in place. So uh, just to come back to the enterprise scorecard, the enterprise, as I said, might be your college. The enterprise might be the organization that you serve. And instead of an entrepreneur who's setting up his own enterprise, you might be, as we say, an entrepreneur who's inside the organization, but still trying to create new systems, new processes to make the organization perform better. Not necessarily by generating profit, but perform better. So for performance, we take these four into uh, account. Like we look at finances, of course. See, we are talking about the enterprise scorecard because it is directly aligned to sustainability analysis also. So when you're looking at uh, financial processes, that's the first thing that you look at. So say, for example, somebody who's teaching in a private engineering or uh, management institution requires to understand that if he's not delivering uh, the kind of, let's say, lectures or the kind of... Uh, not uh, mentoring the kind of research propositions for a research organization, which is not into academics, okay. Then tomorrow, the kind of funding that is coming might just dry up. Uh, if you are moving on to say uh, a newspaper, which is running or an electronic media service, if you're not keeping the correct TRPs, if you're not uh, you know, connecting to the media the way you wish to, you know, there would not be enough viewers tomorrow and you would not, you, you'd be dwindling. And this is something that we have, uh, like from SDRC and from Optima, since we work with these processes, we have seen fantastic uh, electronic uh, institutions. By electronic institutions, I mean, which are obviously institutions all over the world, but which, we, which function in the virtual domain, drying up and uh, not being able to perform properly even before COVID began in the last two years financially. So this is something that we look at first, the financial bottom line. When we are looking at the internal business processes, we say we are essentially looking at what we call the people indicator in the triple bottom line. So the people indicator has to do with how the people are keeping. First of all, you look at their health, uh, both their physical and their mental health. Secondly, you look at something that we call the satisfaction or the happiness index. So a person who's working in a specific place requires to feel that there is something that he or she is delivering, which is of worth. So that value, that perceived value has to be there in that person's mind and in what he's doing. Now your internal business process 
whether you're a teacher, whether you're a journalist, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a chartered accountant, whether you're a development practitioner, whether you're a technologist, if somebody's not taking care of that, and this is not just the HR manager or the talent and engagement officer's duty, if the process doesn't take care of this, then after a point of time, attrition or no attrition, better opportunities or, or no better opportunities, your process will dry up. Because you might not be paying as well or not keeping people as happy physically as another organization. But you might be able to generate the kind of value for which a person stays on, something that we call continuance in uh, balance scorecard or HR parlance, just because that person feels safe, that person feels secure. And that person feels that even if the growth is slow, this is what I'm happy with. This feeling is something that is there also in any ecology that we live in. So if I'm working in a polluting industry and my personal protective equipment is taken care of by my organization and they make it into a, you know, a, a rigorous process, initially I might feel that there's a certain amount of resistance, like I might feel resistance from the inside. But once I understand that they are doing this to keep me safe, not just their processes in place, it would definitely serve as a positive indicator for me to stay on. Uh, what we call the customer uh, aspect in the balance scorecard does not necessarily have to do with, uh, like you know, the customer per se. Because in some of the processes that we work in, say somebody who's a teacher or somebody who is, uh, uh, let's say, a, a research person in a lawyer's firm, somebody who's qualified in law, but he or she is working entirely to create a brief. He's not going out and pleading, right? Think of a chartered accountant who's create, like who's looking at the balance sheets. He might not be in the audit team. Think of a researcher, uh, somebody who's uh, perhaps creating medicines or perhaps doing the, uh, you know, deep dive studies. He might not be meeting the people who are the funding agents, but even the people inside, the people who are working with me, the people who are intrinsic to a process are my customers. So internal and external customers are there who are also an extension of what we call the people process. Now, what we term as growth and learning out here essentially deals with another viewpoint that we can take from the balance scorecards and be uh, like take forward to sustainability reporting, but we have to uh, ensure that this is managed in such a way that it focuses on what we call the external ecology. Because uh, see, uh, in the balance scorecard, this is an internal ecology indicator. But when you're talking about the uh, like environment indicator in a triple bottom line, in a sustainable praxis, you know, a practice which is essentially adhering to the uh, three bottom lines of people, profits, and planet. Now, whenever you're looking at one of those, uh, I'm sorry, just a second, yeah. The moment you're looking at one of those, what you can do is you can uh, create an approach, a mindset where you're connecting uh, the external ecology to the internal ecology and thinking of it as one whole. Now, perhaps you're uh, like, you know, the people who are in an enterprise structure can think of looking at their employees in a way where they are also part of the resource. Similarly, the resources that we use from the outside, like uh, our energy resources, if you are manufacturing something, those resources, the entire supply chain, the way we are selling, uh, the distributors who are ultimately taking the resources out, everything comes into that map. Now, when we look at that map and when we try to balance or when we try to understand how sustainability and uh, presently we are using these terms responsibly and resiliently, resiliently in the sense like if I just tell whoever happens to be my, uh, you know, whoever is interfacing with my organization that this is what you require to do, he or she might not be able to do it because the ecology in which they function might not be resilient to that. So we have to create some kind of a connect, some kind of a balance where my agent in the outside world is in a position to do what I'm thinking of or what I'm putting forward in theory. So uh, uh, I don't know whether you're all familiar with sustainability reporting, but uh, reporting takes it uh, beyond just the framework and there's an assurance aspect involved. So uh, just to clarify to all of you that when we are doing a reporting, there are the three pillars, which is economic, social, and environmental. So when you're putting into a scorecard format, uh, generally, we do not put it as this percent in the like. It's not a 33.3 percent for each of the ones equally, because uh, that often cannot be the reality uh, in the ecology where we are doing the analysis. Because I might try to create a scorecard for my own enterprise or for my own organization, which is 
both financially sustainable because I have looked at the balance scorecard, I have looked at the financials, the internals, the learning and uh, you know growth and all of those aspects. But I'm also trying to marry it to a sustainability scorecard which is looking at the economic, social, and environmental aspects of both inside and outside the organization. Now, it's a difficult proposition to get these two together. So, uh, okay, Ashim, uh, I'd like to ask uh, if like, we can have a small exercise. So is it possible? Sure, sure, please go yeah, ahead. Uh, like, uh, could I ask the participants if they have gotten a piece of pen and paper or uh, you know, a pencil and paper together? Okay, I require them to unmute and you know to get back to me. So, any whoever has uh, actually taken out a, a piece of paper and a pen and is. Uh, yes. I can see Noyamidi has done it, but as for the rest, <laughs> not no. Yeah. Has, yes, we have. To right. Uh, yeah. I see uh, Ramkrishna Babu has also done it. Uh, anyway, uh, this is just a very small exercise. Yeah. Whatever your professions or whatever your ecologies. Uh, like say for example somebody might be retired so he or she might not be functioning right at this moment uh, as a professional anymore okay i'd like you to put down the three words one after the other people planet and profit which is the human or human capital the environmental and the financial bottom lines apropos what we have discussed till now and i'd like you to take uh, just a couple of minutes or maybe a minute per bottom line and write down next to it how this refers to your present ecology. So say, for example, I'm a retired, uh, uh, say, professor of philosophy of physics and I have been teaching for the last, say, 30 years in a specific university or maybe a number of colleges. And today I'm retired. So I want that person, that gentleman, this is entirely hypothetical, of course, to be able to write down that today where I am, when I'm talking about the people indicator, what kind of effect it has on my present ecology. It might uh, have indicators like how much I mix with people, how they come into my uh, workspace or my personal space, uh, the people who are helping me out, my hired helps, the people I live with and the effect that the ecology has on them. Okay, where I am an agent, where I'm a person who's somehow directly involved with them as a stakeholder. In the sense, I impact that person and that person impacts me. Is this clear? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, should I move on? Ashim, I'm moving on. Yeah, you can move ahead. Yeah, right, right. And I'd like you to do the same exercise with the other two indicators. So people, there are some people who are there around me, especially in this COVID scenario, there are people around me who are helping me who are perhaps getting helped by me, right? Who are impacted by me and whom I'm impacting. So this impacting is the keyword. This is how we do a stakeholder analysis. The same thing I'd like you to do for economics, which is the money that I'm spending or not spending in this specific scenario. And what kind of environmental changes there has been. Say, for example, I have a car and I go to work every day in a car or I travel by a specific bus say an air conditioned bus, which I'm not doing right now. So say, for example, I'm just not doing it. And I feel that it has an environmental effect on me in the, these two ways. I would be in an ambient temperature for two and two and a half hours a day inside the bus where I'd simply sit and read a book or listen to music. But at least physically, I was not having to travel in a way which was difficult for me. So if I was traveling by a public bus, which is not air conditioned, I'd be having trouble breathing, perhaps. But in this scenario, this is what I was doing for two hours and it was a relaxing exercise, even though I was going to work and coming back from work, but this is stopped. And I'm not running my air condition for say 24 hours a day. So this is what is changing in your environmental ecology. So what I want you to do is next to people, planet and profits, I want each of you to write down at least one uh, aspect or one indicator which tells you where you're standing right now. And we'd wait for three minutes and come back to this discussion where I want the participants to share what they have written. Is that okay? No, so I think we should, let's give it a couple of minutes for people to just put their point thoughts together. That's what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Yes, Ashim, uh, would you be uh, coordinating this? Because 
I want them to do this exercise and share it with us before we move on to the next presenter. Okay, absolutely, no problem. Okay, okay. So, uh, people, if you could just proceed with the exercise. So, those of you who have a sheet and a paper uh, and a pen with you, uh, as 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 Shatruji had mentioned, that people planet profit three different categories. Uh, how have things changed? I mean, Shatruji, just to I just wanted to get one point across from you. Please, it's please. Something that uh, particularly over the last couple of months during COVID times, how how things? Absolutely, have... absolutely. That's all I want because that will be easier to understand because now we are in a controlled environment. Yes, and yes. and given that this is the new normal now and how businesses. Right. Are overnight uh, in the last couple of months we've seen this we have to look at different strategies absolutely you have hit the nail on the head that's what i want so just want people to quickly all of you all, all the people in in this in this discussion today all the participants uh give you a couple of minutes let's let's give it another couple of minutes so it's 12 20 right now maybe by 12 22 we can have uh, some of you unmute yourselves and and share share a bit about what you've written if that works for everyone or if, if you would not be comfortable unmuting yourselves, you could also just uh, feel free to, to put it down, put your thoughts down in the chat box. So just one one uh, pointer on each thing would work. Yes, and Ashim, let's have some of the people even turn on their videos one by one, let's see, and oh. just share, whoever is comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just saying in case someone is... Uh, yes, yes, of course, of course, absolutely. I understand, yes. Yeah. So, Shatoji, just to summarize the question, if I were right, basically about how I have... Affect, um, impacted the people or planet or profits around me and vice versa. Is that right? No. Shatuji? Yeah, I said you're taking it one step further, Anaha. What I want you to do is you, you have actually understood the three indicators very clearly, right? So you're more mature in the system. But what I was trying to say was these are the three indicators that we have discussed right now, okay? Before we end the exercise, I'll connect it to a scorecard. Now to connect it to a scorecard, I just want you to put forward three things which might have changed or three things which are happening the same way. You might want to put it into an impact form. You might want to put it simply as an event. Uh, is that okay? One example, like, because it's just a little vague still. Yeah, of course. That's what I said. That suppose I travel every day from my uh, place of, uh, like uh, from my residence to my place of work in an air-conditioned bus, right? Okay. So it can so be that, negative positive right the impact no no it doesn't require to be negative or positive it can be anything yeah, okay. it change. That's, yeah, yeah. okay okay got it do we have anyone who's who's ready to uh, to present to share the share what they've written Let's have three or four, not more than that. I think that will be enough. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I can start with. Hi, I'm Hi, Mr. Banerjee, if you please go on. Yes. Yeah. I will say it is an inverted relationship. Okay. Inverted relationship means my income has significantly dried up, but my carbon footprint in whole has reduced. If you say in respect of the carbon footprint, in respect of the bus I travel, the suburban railways I use, my ferry and also all other things as uh, higher tax and all these things. Uh, but what happens in this case is that my mental quotient has also been under strain. Mental quotient. Because you see, when you say of the carbon footprint, there is a very instinctive relationship between the carbon footprint and your uh, survival question. Survival question means your way and ounce of means. Because whenever you say of sustainability, there can be no sustainability when people themselves who are the agents of survival cannot survive at all. Therefore, perfect. perfect. Therefore, yeah. what is happening is that some many people are surviving on me because as you were saying that they are dependent on me for survival. Now I cannot allow them that subsistence. For survival exactly my footprint carbon footprint as a whole has reduced but my mental quotient is under strain the people who are dependent on me for the subsistence they are under strain and i will say after all this sustainability of concept to some extent and this survival of our fittest as an agent we as person as individuals is something like an inverted relationship 
Thank you, Mr. Banerjee. We'll move on to Nayanidhi. But before that, could you just uh, tell us what your profession is before we move on? Yes, I am a legal counsel by profession, and I practice in Calcutta High Court. Thank you very much, Mr. Banerjee. Yeah, uh, Nayanidhi, if you could have it from you. Yeah. Uh, Nanidhi, you're not very really clear. Uh, I think there's something with the yeah. Um, yeah, much better. Am much I better. audible? Now? Yes, 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 absolutely. Please. Okay, okay mm -hmm. I'm a social researcher. I'm, I'm trained in sociology. And I just returned from um, after two years of, uh, of doing research in California as, as a Fulbright a postdoctoral research fellow. And my research concerns arts practice, creative arts practices for rehabilitation in the prisons of California. So, um, you, for the people, uh, uh, for this, uh, for, uh, regarding the people, you know, who make up my ecology at home and uh, also in my workspace, uh, the first thing that comes to mind because I've been in you know, a home intern for the last two, two and a half months is that I'm getting to spend a lot of time with my mother who's not well at all. Okay. At the same time, interestingly, I'm also getting to interact a lot, a lot with my colleagues and collaborators who, who are back in California through webinars. So had this not happened, they would be holding their events without uh, uh, corresponding online you know, thing. So that, in a strange way, this has been a blessing in disguise for me. So whatever is happening in California regarding my research uh, uh, area, I'm getting to interact with them, know that firsthand. Okay, even yesterday morning, I had a conference, I mean, I had a webinar with uh, the people I worked with for the past two years. So that way, um, uh, this is again positive. Both are positive in a particular. So sense. there has been a change. There has been yes, a perce perceivable been a change. change. Absolutely. Had the COVID thing not happened, then in February, I was thinking that I would miss the annual, uh, uh, you know, they have the annual presentations, annual conferences, discussions where they decide what, how they're going to do, what they're going to do for the next uh, one year. And right. it's more than one organization who come together because they take conferences very seriously. So all that is happening online now, and I'm actually being able to be part of that. And I think so you're that, more the part of the network that you actually belong to yes, because of the scenario. Yeah, that, you're exactly. More. That is so. That is so strange. Now the thing is, before I <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> right, I had to leave my job. So yeah. Um, currently technically unemployed but because okay. uh, <laughs> but the data because i got the data and i'm supposed to be writing it so the data, mm -hmm. the, the data is still coming in so that's a great thing for me okay and the other uh, regarding the carbon footprint i agree with mr Banerjee. i think moloy Banerjee was his mm -hmm. name mr so, Banerjee. Yeah. yes uh, the carbon footprint has really decreased and that is a that's really good again that gives a lot of peace of mind and all um we don't meet our friends. That's a different thing. <laughs> but the carbon footprint has decreased. And regarding profit, the interesting thing is, yes, I'm not earning right now. I'm not on a payroll. But the spending is also severely limited now because we are not spending. It's only when we have to go somewhere, then the uh, uh, trans transport work is going on. Right. That's all. So that's Thank you very much, Dr. Basu. Uh, Dr. Basu and she's, as you heard, a Fulbright fellow. That's another take from her. Is there anybody who'd like to share or else add, uh, like, you know, because my time is almost over. Adrija uh, has uh, raised the hand as well. So I'm okay. going to... Adrija, uh, could we have it from you, please? Yeah, I'm just going to unmute them. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello, yeah. Could you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, yes, yes. Please, please. Yes, yeah, sir. Sir, how COVID-19 could help the global green economy transformation? How? Okay. Uh, actually, I'll pass that on to my uh, next speaker because uh, he's going to speak about uh, all of this. And yes, uh, Ramkrishna, uh, Mr. Mukherjee, yeah, would you like uh, to? Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, I am a, a social worker come development activist. That's the way I can put myself. Uh, I uh, fully agree with the Nayani that yes, this, this has given us a lot of opportunity to interact with like i work with rural communities mostly and uh, it has given me the ample opportunity to uh, interact with people who have come back to their villages and um, uh, like like one of my colleagues has just started uh, farming activity with them in one of the village and it's, it's it's a great opportunity for them also to understand and look at look back uh, their own system and ecosystem uh, large, larger ecosystem for sustainability. 
they are they are looking for options so there are definitely uh, uh, definitely a opportunity which has come but i fully agree with uh, molayda because that's what i see with these migrants also that uh, mental percent has has definitely gone under severe strain they don't know what they will be continuing tomorrow unless and until we can we can definitely showcase some result on ground immediately so that's very important so uh, yes carbon footprint has gone down but how much that we need to look at because at the global uh, aspect that is not much thank that's you mr mukherjee yeah coming from you that's a very interesting because uh, we have had some uh, discussions with him online uh, as we see like every person who's coming here is from a different profession uh, and it's time for me to conclude so i'll conclude very fast like i made you go through an exercise to connect a scorecarding approach to the sustainability framework that we were sharing and this is where i conclude with audrija's question because audrija you raised a very interesting question uh, see whenever we are scorecarding i can't take you through the entire covid journey but as you see there are positives and negatives in every scenario which we don't often look at because what is in front of us is always apparent because what's happening right now is what we are looking at but whenever you put anything into a scorecard the first thing that we require to do according to the balanced scorecard methodology at least is put it into numbers now i am very poor with numbers i always used to face my, uh, you know fail mathematics all my school life and so on so even i moved into a different uh, like you know scenario and saw that mathematics was not about to leave me entirely so when i learned and when i first started practicing the scorecard approach that was before i had become a sustainability practitioner from that point onwards to today what i would like you to do is whenever you're looking at anything if you can put it into an activity or an account focus account in the sense of accounting but something where you put everything into numbers like say for example x number of days i was going somewhere and x amount of money that i'm saving and x number of opportunities which i can make Uh, emerge from what is my current situation like for example nani di uh, dr basu when she said that now she is in network and she is a very highly trained researcher so tomorrow a research based activity might evolve or emerge from the connection that she is in which happens to be where she is much more comfortable because having done research there for 2 years that's something which happens to be her core uh, competence area but at the same time if somebody was by profession a teacher or somebody like molayda mr banerji if uh, he uh, has to go and practice in the court unless there is some kind of uh, like system where at least he starts offering consultations online to his clients it will be a tremendous setback for him as mr mukherjee uh, rankrishna like when he said that the kind of development practices that he is in there are people who are going to starve and no amount of uh, online interventions can help them you have to go out into the field so similarly for a sustainability approach or a sustainable approach to creating an enterprise or an enterprise focus scorecard you require to take all of your activities and put numbers next to it so if you put a matrix like say for example if it adds up to 100 the easiest is at 33.3 but what kind of uh, importance do you assign to each of these three measures and then having looked at what happens to be your theory you move on to look at how much of it you can actually achieve in your present scenario so if you are being able to help the environment it should have a payback for you if you are seeing back home more and you are uh, let's say using more electricity you should be using some of it to generate some more work which will ultimately help you pay your bills better so this is what we are trying to do when we are looking at a scorecard approach to sustainability sustainability is serious only when it pays so that's what we are trying to underscore uh, ashim uh, i think we can move on to the next speaker i have concluded my bit and if there are any questions uh, they can get back to you and then we can uh, answer in the plenary session is that okay with you yes absolutely thank you so much uh, shwetu ji ji uh, just just uh, wait wait i'm going to ask a question now i'm going to press the red button to click now i have muted kore diyeche ashim I yeah. think you require to uh, mute. One of the participants yeah, 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 yeah. has un unmuted. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah yes. Uh, Ashim was saying something. Ashim, if you could go on. Yes. All right. So uh, just just to quickly 
of course you know uh, i wanted to also just stress on this point because it's it's this activity that you did is actually very interesting for someone like me as well because i'm working with an organization called swetcha right now and yes. of course the current last few months have also uh, many of us organizations have have gone through a lot of stress with restructuring and figuring out what what the next steps can be because our work is largely on the ground and with communities and with uh, absolutely you work in the front line yeah yeah so it's 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 extremely difficult to figure out what to do when you when you're suddenly told that you have to stay within your homes and there's a so it's a global pandemic and you have mm-hmm. to completely everything is isolated everything is from home everything is just in front of a laptop all of a sudden so i think just in terms of prioritizing people planet profit restructuring things putting that scorecard down uh very beautifully through that activity and and also to get to know uh, from other people from different backgrounds as to what how this pandemic has really affected them and their work uh, what have been the positives what have been the negatives from from this entire thing and what are essentially the takeaways from the last couple of months so thank you so much for that and and for conducting this activity just i want to add one thing yes yes that is uh, i read a lot of newspaper and in the guardian uh, that is being published from london there is one thing that what human civilization has achieved in the 6000 years of its uh, evolution has been completely undone by the 150 years of industrial revolution yeah okay and therefore the question is back to the very simple when we are using this technology we are even using all this comforts of the life then we are undoing thing and then if we are not undoing the thing then we will be live, still be living in a age of so called primitiveness what is the choice before us absolutely thank you mr banerjee thank you so thank much you. yes yes all right so thank you uh, shrotu ji uh, that was really very well done my uh, pleasure uh, we we'll just uh, yes uh, in case there are any more questions that anyone has for shrotu ji you can feel free to again uh, put them down in the chat box uh, we will also look at addressing some last questions towards the end of our so you want to keep yourselves on mute um, there are some people who are i think accidentally getting unmuted or are unmuting themselves in case you would like to say something you could put that across in the chat box it would just be a lot easier uh, ashim uh, because uh, like before i uh, like you know pass it on to professor senial Yeah. Uh, could i just put that in bengali in case uh, somebody oh, requests no, absolutely yes yes uh our shakul ki bolchi ar ki jodi kono form e kichu bolar thake ha apnara oi chat box er ekta option ache oi khantate question ta ke type kore deben ar jodi dekhen je kichu bolte hobe she khetre jodi half ta tule mane uh, mane jeno parolchi mane half ta tule apnara dekhalen ha je amra ekhon kichu bolbo क्वेश्चन Was there anyone? Is there anyone who? No, I, I don't think so. Ashim, I think we should move on to the next. Uh, All right. Okay. Yes. So yes. So now we've reached, of course, the the final facilitator for this webinar today. Once again, would like to thank all of you. Uh, although I think we may go a little ahead of time. We were supposed to conclude at one o'clock. We may conclude by around one fifteen. So of course, because there were some tech issues in the middle, so we had to take few breaks. Um, but having said that, thank you all so much for sticking around and thank you for staying. uh till the end of this webinar uh i'm going to now introduce you to our third speaker for the day uh this is uh, judajit sanyal he's a green building consultant to arc cii igbc and a six stigma operations master consultant on board sustainable design research consortium uh he has helped float many social sector ventures and handles projects as independent as an independent consultant in digital quality is a master's degree holder in radio physics and is currently pursuing his phd with focus on sustainable deployment of technology from iiest chipur uh, thank you so much judajit for for joining us today. Uh, thank you so much yeah it's a pleasure to be here so uh, uh, am i audible yes you're audible am i good okay good so uh, i'll just uh, yes um Yes. Uh, so what I'll be doing is uh, I'll not be uh, I'll be sharing my screen and you can hear me. 
so i'll stop the video now this is uh, i think i hope uh, this will uh, help balance the network loads which we are facing so uh, uh, just give me one second so i'll just uh, share what i have today absolutely Are you able to share screens, Jyoti Ji? Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to share my screen. Okay. Just let me know in case you need any further. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm <coughs> just give me a second because the direct uh, document sharing option is behaving in a slightly glitchy manner. Mm -hmm. So. Not a problem. We can see your screen now, so I think you can you can open the PDF. Yeah. Yes. Yes. thank you again for bearing with me um so i think there's a slight connection yeah, the, the, there's a I, I think there's a connection issue just please uh no problem no problem Just a second, please. Just one second. So, uh, So uh, while we're waiting for uh, the PPT, uh, I'll just uh, ask everyone. So, um, what do you think is the greatest challenge uh, during COVID? What, what uh, could everyone just unmute themselves, or a uh, few of you, if you could kindly unmute, unmute yourself before I go into this PPT? Uh, am I? Uh, is it visible? Absolutely, yes, it is. Yeah. So, uh, just you know, I'd I'd like a few opinions, if possible, two or three uh, at least. What do you think is the greatest challenge that you faced as professionals uh, during the COVID uh, crisis? If we could have uh, two or three answers, possibly. Would anyone like to express what has been the the biggest challenge for them in the last four four months of? Uh, of living in isolation and and leading business from indoors, essentially. Very simple. Hello. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yes, yes. yes. Very yes. simple. We are unable to deliver the service to the clients who are in dire needs of the service. Okay, great. Uh, because you see, so, when a person comes for the legal remedy, he doesn't come sit with the fashion or something like that. It's a very uh, just go on gung ho something like that. They are in dire needs. And when we cannot provide the service because of the situation, because of the closure of the courts and the whole infrastructure itself, right. then uh, thank not you. only they are in distress, we are also in distress. Yes. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll just uh, pick up from there. So essentially, uh, I guess the greatest challenge which everyone would agree is connectivity because staying in isolation uh, essentially allows very limited connectivity. You know, even right now we were having some connectivity issues actually. So uh, I guess the most important thing is since uh, we have very limited ways of interaction thing with each other during this time, um, that might be regarded as one of the uh, greatest challenges which uh, do currently exist. So uh, if we can uh, just look at this.
yes yes please yes please go ahead go ahead i'm sorry if uh, you you're wanting to say something yes i was also thinking yes. that you know as people living in calcutta the amfan is really what affected our connectivity you know very badly don't you think um, uh, that, that that i guess that that was you know your uh, typical yes they did it did so right. this is what i'm saying so since we have very limited connectivity and uh, mm. it is essentially dependent on telephony or on you know wireless multimedia wired mm. or wireless multimedia communications mm -hmm. so uh, there are two or three things which uh, simply come to mind so um, i'll i'll uh, just try to link it to whatever this lab prepared but today so that's basically telling us that uh, there is a need for technology to be pervasive in our lives uh, independent of our financial situation as much as possible so uh, if i just go back to uh, professor mukherjee's uh, first presentation with us so we have to take i guess a synergistic approach when we are looking at uh, sustainable development or even what essentially we can call as a green economy so i guess economies may have degrees of greenness so um for example this whatever is going on right now this uh, telecommunications and telecommuting based uh, you know economies will possibly be emerging so if i just go into uh, the presentation very quickly uh, we will see that uh, this is uh, designed just pre covid so uh, we can see that uh, the green economy was in resurgence this was expected to grow to 10% by 2030 we'll uh, come to these points again we'll visit them again and uh, you know these are some simple figures uh, around 5.7% of indian gdp is currently green so essentially if we just look at the green economy features we'll see that uh, the first one is efficiency because that we can't really compromise with say if i have very poor connectivity that means uh, i can't interact with anyone i can't uh, do my job i can't uh, do practically anything right now the way this world is right now and uh, in future we have to like expect that some something maybe not of this degree but of a lesser degree might recur at some point of time in the future so i guess systemic changes are uh, pretty much required i'll talk about uh, a few you know examples of this as regards to green economics and uh, green businesses in a while so the first thing is we the features would be this green economy would essentially be efficient it would be a clean economy it would be circular in nature so that it can be sustaining um a circular economy essentially uh, we were again coming back to the first presentation we saw the difference between a closed and an open system would be a uh, closed system would be one in which essentially uh, all the components are recyclable while an open system would not allow complete recycling of uh, many of the components so uh, other than some fixed sources of energy and things like that um, i guess if our economy is essentially circular then it is sustainable so this this is physically provable uh, collaboration is a huge aspect especially become more uh, prominent during covid because you know the uh, many of the people might agree with me here there is a tendency in even the best of organizations to work in silos uh, covid sort of has forced people to look only at global teams because uh, working in silos is no longer possible uh, in fact keeping those silos open for work is also not possible in most cases the last uh, feature is very important we are saying low carbon footprint so how low is low we really don't have a benchmark for that but we can say around lowering of the carbon footprint by around 10 to 15% should be taken as a minimum uh, benchmark 
So if we look at the pillars of green economy, we'll see that they are, as you already know from my previous presentation by uh, Professor Sanyal, um, they are people, profits, and planet. So uh, if I just move on to green jobs, uh, we can see that you know, people are going to turn to green jobs. Why? Uh, even in a uh, post-COVID or, uh, you know, even during COVID, uh, what are the most significant challenges that we faced? Uh, I think uh, many of us living under lockdown, initially the challenge was, uh, will we get food at all? So, you know, the effects of, uh, you know, produce not reaching a city in time were pretty badly felt and uh, if you remember the economists among us would uh, remember that food prices shot up uh, astronomically during the first days uh, after the lockdown after which there was some regulation so um, agriculture and forestry is possibly one of the most significant things considering such crisis in general also uh, we I'll, I'll discuss just after the slide why um, uh, focusing more on these things mm, i think uh, ramkrishna sir is there with us he says um, he was talking about the problems that people are facing people have returned to their uh, rural homes so uh, and they remember the, these are quite a large uh, percentage of our populace. So um, having them not being able to do work would definitely impact us negatively in a very wide sense. So uh, typically uh, other jobs might include energy and carbon capture and storage. Okay. Um, energy efficiency. Energy efficiency would be, uh, you know, you can, I guess, people in organizations, uh, now this is, you know, you'll possibly try to think about this a little more because the moment we have everything surplus, we don't think much about it. But when we have shortages, say, for example, energy efficiency, one simple example of energy efficiency, normally what we think, we'll think about lights and, you know, uh, air conditioning and things like that but uh, one very significant part of energy efficiency is related to your computing resources and servers so uh, you know in a time like this where bandwidth is essentially limited to a certain extent and also obviously you know even energy needs to be managed efficiently especially in india because we have faced COVID during the summer and uh, now it's continuing into the monsoons. These are typically peak energy requirement, uh, you know, months or uh, these are the times when we have peak energy requirements. So careful balancing of these is going to be relevant. So energy trading, environment protection. Again, we are coming back to environment. Obviously, governmental and regulatory administration uh, these are significant as green jobs, green construction and manufacturing are there. So uh, if we can just look at some examples of, uh, you know, how we can sort of generate a green business or what uh, some of the things that we discussed. Say, for example, the first thing that we discussed, how connectivity can actually uh, revolutionize green business, how we can look at green sustainability in uh, those terms. Um, I guess uh, some of the participants here have uh, a lot of, in fact, Ashim himself has a lot of experience working with NGOs um, to basically promote livelihood. If we look at, say, an NGO which is training people to get into slightly modern agriculture, because uh, the moment we are standing on now, this particular instant of time, we may face food crisis. This is possible. We are still balancing through that because we are still a large part of our economy is agricultural. So we still are not, you know, up that creek completely. But in the future, there might be certain instances where we do face food crisis. So um, 
if we can just think about it rather than remaining in traditional agriculture if some of that agriculture can be you know technologically enhanced then that would possibly be beneficial uh, for both the people farming currently as well as people who would be investing in the technology uh, and you could even have certain startup ventures there are already a few uh, good ventures uh, functioning in different parts of india these days um, who are into farming but uh, to my knowledge there aren't many widespread uh, you know ventures meaning people, most of them are into alternative farming like vertical farming and things like that so if you could actually have people who are trained in conventional farming getting trained in the use of technology and you know there there can be some sort of a partnership model which would basically guarantee the farmers much more value than what they are getting currently by selling their yield this may help eliminate middlemen as well as you know create a new livelihood for them because essentially it will be farming but it will be pretty different from what they have practiced so in such a situation say for example connectivity might enable a training exercise to be that much more effective meaning if we have a situation where uh, training is delivered online there are certain uh, disadvantages to it we all agree i guess but just think about it say somebody is training uh, farmers on on using one particular machine okay say for example a uh, sowing machine which would you know automatically sow seeds how to maneuver that machine etc etc or maybe a simple drone which would regulate uh, whether or not uh, you know insects were infesting the crops so when we have physical training we can have uh, somebody coming over and training the farmers for say 2 days 3 days and the farmers will retain some of that knowledge and they'll try but every time they forget something or at least during the initial phases they would have to refer back to that person who may or may not be free at this point of time second thing is uh, post this covid crisis this concept of commuting as well as you know group uh, interactions these are not possible right now right so we could have a situation where they could be uh, provided the things uh, you know that particular drone maybe uh, or that a uh, sewing instrument they could be mailed that instrument and uh, online they could be trained one huge advantage is uh, provided there is connectivity you can have that training session uh, in very high definition so farmers would know exactly how to operate it without any you know uh, gray areas and they can uh, have it recorded so essentially they can replay that recording at any point of time and repeat that uh, you know those actions watching that particular recording so uh, you know training might become more enhanced so this is one particular way of uh, looking at you know how we can green some very traditional things which are a big part of our economy so uh, if we look at green economics so essentially we say that green economics is fair because payoffs for uh, all stakeholders is more or less balanced and it should be efficient because if it is essentially circular then that means um, recycling is happening and more you recycle something more value you get out of it so essentially this will possibly give you more value than if you are using a non circular uh, alternative so um, green economics also consider, uh, considers direct valuation of ecological resources as well as natural capital and uh, it should be low carbon resource efficient and socially inclusive so uh, typically it is backed by many governments germany india as well as the us very majorly uh, as well as major global bodies so um, if i just look at the green economic growth in india 
uh, if you look at the target of 175 gigawatts of renewable power capacity so a uh, large part of this is uh, allotted to solar and a large part of that solar a significant portion would be domestic solar so what is the advantage of having domestic solar technology just think about uh, this crisis that we are going through now i'm you know just trying to consider this moment again and again for more relevance in context say if you had uh, say for example a particular uh, set of solar cells mounted wherever you are currently and if we could uh, balance our energy loads throughout the day so one set of solar cells might be since they would uh, produce about 1 kilowatt hour of power easily that would be sufficient to power a number of low income households or uh, more than one medium to high income household uh, i am uh, linking this to income simply because of the fact that the number of uh, electrical and electronic devices can be proportional to income in many cases uh, a number of established uh, academic as well as professional studies exist basically link my uh, statement to so essentially what we are looking at is how you green your business and why you green your business so why i think we dealt with uh, extensively out here so uh, i'll just try to take you through one more uh, set of slides if i have uh, that time if you could just uh, hold on and because sure small connectivity maybe run through it in another 5 5 minutes so that yeah, we yeah, yes 5 five minutes would be uh, like more Perfect. than sufficient not a problem right. thanks thanks sir so um, i hope everyone gets the context i hope everyone gets where i'm coming from when i'm uh, talking about why we require greening and sustainability and in fact uh, even regarding you know that small intervention which i was discussing with farmers so even that proves that uh, essentially a green model might be more sustainable because uh, you know people might say okay let us completely mechanize and modernize farming eliminate the need for more than one farmer so in uh, an economy like india that would bring about uh, a major social unrest and that is not required also so essentially uh, we can have a middle path which is beneficial to everyone so if i look at green business efficiency enhancement we already know that the three pillars of the green economy are people profit and planets so if i want to green my business so uh, typically if we look at uh, the three aspects this actually uh, professor sanyal also touched on employee satisfaction is extremely necessary so one more thing uh, which everybody is aware about during the recent crisis we found that many uh, businesses especially educational businesses have tried to cut down on salaries while increasing fees and for practically no valid reason because uh, what is happening is people are delivering their lectures from home so essentially the operational costs inclusive of electricity which is a major cost is saved for the institution and at the same point of time they are paying the people less and expecting it to sustain uh, showing cause that you know we haven't received enough fees or uh, you know thing the cost of things are expected to increase or people who are already many people in the business they have tried to put forward this justification that next year possibly the revenues will be lower so essentially what this will do or what this does is create complete employee dissatisfaction disengage the employees who are uh, the major part of the process because whenever you have the learners the learners 
will not only learn from youtube videos so that is not desirable and that is not desirable uh, not only uh, from uh, anyone else but from the learners themselves so essentially what is happening is the moment you uh, reduce this employee satisfaction factor at some point of time this will come and bite you in the back now uh, you should try to set a particular level of employee satisfaction using whatever metrics you are comfortable with uh, for your own ecosystem inclusivity is extremely important because the moment you uh, start harboring prejudices and uh, practice any sort of segregation whether it is based on race caste creed gender whatever you are essentially uh, bringing down employee satisfaction you are creating an atmosphere of mistrust and fear so sensitivity to social needs this is also very important because uh, we are social creatures we do rely on uh, our social identity for you know congealing everything that is us and this is very very important in that aspect and obviously fairness is an issue because the moment uh, you find that your system is biased any uh, system that is biased will statistically tend to lean away from a normal distribution which will possibly cause some errors in the system to appear so uh, if i look at uh, profits the second pillar over utilization of resources is a huge factor so you might be over utilizing resources in the hope that they will produce more profits and they might for some point of time but say for example uh, just assume i'll go into a simple example uh, from the world of six sigma the japanese car production systems which we are familiar with like the tps or the toyota production system they emphasized on just in time manufacturing so that say for example rather than manufacture uh, say 20000 cars in a month they were only trying to focus on say maybe uh, say 5000 cars a week now what that does is if your demand changes or if your system becomes uh, more prone to errors you can recalibrate that and you can put less pressure on the system second thing is the moment you set very high production targets or the moment you try to over utilize your resources if you have human factors involved there they will always try and this is a psychological aspect of it they will always try to just do whatever needs to be done quicker so that they can have that sort of buffer time they can relax this is a uh, part of human nature because whenever we are put under stress we want that stress to be relieved so essentially over utilization of resources uh, this is going to essentially impact negatively on profits eventually so financial sustainability of business practices this is again linked to the previous point also other things are also there that there are certain uh, aspects of your business which might help you to say for example uh, uh, you might be using a very cheap plastic cover to manufacture a particular product which might save you a lot of money initially but the moment people you know understand that okay this is this cover might have certain health issues associated with it that might have a deep negative impact on your business so again profit based fair reward schemes should be there because if you are not incentivizing uh, at least reasonably incentivizing uh, people or processes will not work to their optimum as well as green leveraging of capital uh, the you know if you can invest in more green people friendly processes uh, which are less negative as far as impact on environment are concerned eventually you will get higher paybacks from them so if you look at uh, green business transformation for uh, in terms of the planet aspect or the third pillar we will see that uh, in, in environmental impact assessment this is extremely important because whatever your products are or your services are if they have a negative environmental impact or even if they have a perceived negative environmental impact 
they are not going to be popular if we just go back uh, more than a century uh, the implementation of ac systems was heavily delayed due to people perceiving ac to be highly dangerous something very similar happened with 5g technologies in recent times and uh, thankfully however we are in the 4g 5g domain because communication is like the most important thing right now uh, amidst this global crisis so ecologically sustainable business practices again linking to the previous point and the stakeholder network that should be an inclusive network meaning basically your customers your employees you yourself any other tertiary stakeholders all of them should be on the same page as to why you're developing certain practices and how it is overall beneficial so before you develop the practices you have to choose the practices which are overall beneficial as well as uh, guaranteeing a certain assured profit or growth in profits as you will okay so essentially you know with the socio ecological as well as economic sustainability uh, largely affected if you uh, can just see heavy industries have been solely affected okay however industries where you know small batch manufacturing takes place as well as industries where basically you have say people who are working with handicrafts people who are working in very reduced um, factory environments even according to regulation they are being allowed to operate since they are uh, less likely to create a widespread outbreak in their own localities of covid right so even in these circumstances you can see why typically big businesses are very 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 susceptible to such uh, environmental factors which when disturbed might negatively impact their ecosystem in a very large way which obviously would in turn affect all of their stakeholders so essentially green business practices you can go for because they make sense so thank you so that's it from my end so if you have any questions you're uh, free to shoot them off and i'll be there to uh, answer you to the best of my abilities thank you very much judajit uh, for that lovely presentation thank you uh, if there are any questions um, you can post them in the chat box or you can also feel free to unmute yourselves and address those or if you have anything to say about the presentation in particular for example uh, judajit thank you so much for firstly shedding light on green economies and green jobs and giving us an in depth understanding into what is more more thank you shin at this point really required to to have that shift and to for more people to actually get in line with sustainability within their within their core work or introduce uh, sustainability into their work and also looking at uh, green jobs as a permanent option uh, yes absolutely at least for the next uh, year or two uh, special special focus i believe needs to be like yes absolutely and i think particular... this pandemic has taught us exactly that and uh, yes know, that it's extremely important that we that we make those changes uh, from now on with anyone uh, has anything to say in chat box just giving it a couple of minutes yeah sure okay uh, noini has asked how far are government state and central supporting solar solar power enterprises yes uh, i'll just go for that uh, governments central government has a specific policy for supporting solar power enterprises uh, with a considerable amount of uh, like they they are going to give zero tax for the for the first three years there are uh, specific funding schemes also all they need is for them to be startups and not uh, subsidiaries of large companies so uh, the government is actually pushing its weight behind solar powered initiatives however it is my personal opinion that uh, you know hybrid solar wind 
or uh, solar with any other technology often works better because solar has some imp uh, environmental impact in terms of uh, whenever you design uh, these solar cells or solar panels you have a uh, significant amounts of arsenic which are released and you know uh, even if you can capture all of that in a safe environment disposal of that will again entail uh, like environmental costs which are significant uh, in uh, response to professor basu i would like to say uh, one significant uh, initiative is the use of you know organic solar cells you know they are there's a lot of research going on in uh, this particular domain and we may actually see them in the market within the next 5 to 10 years so, but it will take some time let's just put it that way so purely or organic cells right so organic uh, solar cells wouldn't have this arsenic problem no 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 they won't they won't oh, they are wow. purely organic sounds really good thank you so much yeah, my pleasure Are there any uh, more questions for Professor Sanyar? We can, or if there are any questions uh, for any of our speakers, anyone has anything that they'd like to say, um, you can unmute yourselves right now. If there are any comments that you have, if you'd like to speak about um, the sheet that you that you uh, you know the activity that you did with Shatrujit right like before this, if if anyone wants to share anything about that as well, please feel free to to share any updates that you have on on the chat or or if you'd like to unmute yourselves i know it's been a it's been a, a long discussion it's been a long webinar we've been uh, around for about two and a half hours almost now but uh, thank you so much thank you all very much for being here and thank you for being so patient despite some tech challenges that we had in the middle um any questions anyone has any last questions that they'd like to address Anything from our facilitator, Sanjukta uh, Shatujit, would you all like to add something? Uh, yes, Ashim, yes uh, Ashim uh, I think it would be best that uh, once, uh, if Sanjukta wants to put something forward, then you conclude because uh, I think it has been covered. And if there are any questions that might be uh, addressed to any of us at any point of time, I told yeah. Adrija also. Uh, if they'd like to get back to Swetcha with anything else, absolutely. And yes. I think that might be. Uh, you know, yes, we can. We can definitely problem. take the conversation offline. So, in case mm -hmm. anyone has any questions, uh, you can write to us, or you can write directly to Sanjukta or anyone from the team, and uh, they'd be happy to take take your questions as well. Yes, uh, because yeah, uh, you know, uh, Swetcha keeps on just for everybody's uh, convenience. Swetcha keeps on working in these fields, and I'm sure there will be other uh, interventions like this. So, yes. uh, yeah, that's all. And, and the scope of the present project also was uh, a bit of handholding that might be required by emerging or existing entrepreneurs to green their processes or any inputs that might be important for them. The whole idea was to set up a very, very strong discourse uh, to highlight the need and the benefits versus the you know, challenges in greening. And uh, of course, uh, looking at the policies enablers uh, and creating a strong voice to, you know, to push forward this most important agenda. And we are really very, very thankful to get a cohort of like-minded people who are interested. I have noticed some uh, remarks in the chats, which I would really like to take offline. Uh, and uh, I, I think uh, keeping the constraints of time in mind. From my side, I am, um, you know, closing this uh, session. However, would like to get off. You lost you towards you. Two were, you, were you saying something? Sorry. Yeah. So to, to formally conclude today's session with the hope that we'll be meeting all of you uh, in future and uh, be part of your journey and of course you know we are part of this community and we have our clusters who are working towards establishing uh, the fact that it pays to be clean absolutely thank you thank you so much Sanjukta, for those words uh, as you said rightly you know when the project started out it was 
pre covid so of course things structure wise have changed uh, not just for your project but for all so there are a total of 19 different alumni uh, who have been selected from different parts of the country to run their projects in collaboration uh, with swecha and of course the, the us embassy and uh, sanjukta is being one of them of course like she mentioned the structure has had to have been changed and we are doing this of course to virtual mode uh, through a webinar and not face to face there's no amount, there's not enough hand holding that can happen as well uh, it's not as hands on as it can be because of the kind of times that we're in but we really really hope that you all had something to take back from this firstly thank you all so much for taking time out on a sunday morning i know it's it's a it's a difficult time for all of us in any case but uh, for all of us to take time out to be here as part of this discussion uh, really means a lot to to the entire team and uh, we look forward to taking this both offline as well as online again maybe conducting a few more webinars like this or offline sessions that we can do or one to one interactions that we can have so feel free to reach out to any one of us uh, in case you need any any further assistance and as sanjukta said the idea is to create a collective to create a cohort that's strong and that is actually promoting sustainability uh, across businesses and and promoting the idea of sustainability goals within the larger framework of this country and the vision that we have uh, going forward so thank you all very much with that i'd like to conclude today's session and particularly thank our facilitators sanjukta shatrajit and judajit for a very very wonderful presentation very very thank you so much ashim thank and you so much ashim it was very nice thank you thank you so much and also we'll be sharing a feedback link with all of the participants today um to put in their comments on what we could do more yeah so anita just to conclude i thought it would be great if you could maybe share uh, links to your facebook page or any form of social media handles that you have so that if in case anyone wants to connect directly with you as well uh, with your organization they could they could probably do that also so maybe in the chat box or if you want with the feedback form you could share it has link as well and you can share your links with somebody yeah, I'll, i'll do that uh, post the workshop yeah so yes because there are some questions that have come in in the chat box about how we can connect with swecha as well so i'll share our links and uh, sanjukta and i will both forward that to all the participants so that you all can stay connected thank you thank you all so much hope you enjoy the rest of your sunday and uh, stay safe stay home and uh, yeah we look forward to connecting with you all very very soon thank you thank you so much Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care, all of you. Yeah, yes. Thanks. Bye. Thank you very much.